News of Meetup Group. The topic for our discussion is API governance and custom rule set. So before we start, some safe harbor statements. So both the speaker and the host are organizing this meetup in individual capacity only. We are not representing our companies here. This presentation is strictly for learning purpose only. Organizer or presenter do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work for your business requirement. This presentation is not meant for any promotional activities. Some housekeeping. So as we are recording the session, so the recording will be uploaded in the meetup page and you can find it over there uh, within 24 hours. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask that. You can unmute. We have given you mic access, so make it more interactive. So if you have any question, just let me uh, know and we can or anyone from the group can answer that. OK, just feel free to stop me wherever you want. And once the meetup is done, please provide your feedback. You will get a feedback email. Please do provide your feedback because that is very much important for us to improve. Also, you can suggest like what different topic you want in our uh, meetups, and we would be able to provide you that as well. So about the organizer, Acube and me, we are the organizer. So we are just skipping the intro part for us. Uh, that's fine, Acube, right? Yeah, this is our 30th second meetup. Yeah. OK. So now, uh, not wasting much time, let's directly move to the agenda. So what we are going to discuss is, as we know, it is for API governance. So we'll discuss like uh, what different rule set mules of provide, how we can use that rule set to apply governance to our RAML, OK, and how we can have our custom rule set. Then uh, we'll have our demo. And if you have any question at the last also, we can have some time for question and answers. OK, so API governance. So anyone have tried API governance from the team uh, or like to share like what they have done before we go much deep into the uh, discussion? Anyone? So in our project, Abhishek, we have applied. So mm -hmm. it basically you know checks the uh, some uh, there are uh, certain parameters which it checks uh, whenever we upload uh, or you know publish any APIs into the right. API manager. Right, right. Uh, anyone else has tried on this or uh, at least studied or seen any other meetups on this? Any 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 knowledge on this and from the team? Anyone? No, Abhishek. No, nothing is enough. Oh, okay, fine. Cool. So uh, before. Jumping to API governance, let us discuss about universal API manager. So that's that's a that's a biggest thing. What a good a better a good thing. What uh, Mule Software introduced universal API manager, and which contain a lot of things like API governance, Flex Gateway, CLI, and whatnot. So all all of these are under one single umbrella, where you can find everything. OK, in which governance come, governance help you with certain rule sets, a collection of rule sets, which can help you to improvise your API design phase and life cycle. OK, it provides you a centralized governance uh, phase policies. OK, we can say uh, which help you with the best practices which you should follow when you are designing your API. OK, so what all things we have in our universal API manager? So we have got CLI, we have got Flex Gateway, uh, API Manager, API Governance, Experience Hub. So let us uh, let us have a little bit more brief description of this, like what this do. So the offering from Universal API Manager is uh, divided into four different level, we can say. First is Accelerate Application Delivery, which contains of API Design Center and CLI. So we know what Design Center do. We create our RAML over there. So that help us to create a blueprint of how our application should look like, like what are the protocols we are following, what are the methods we are doing, what kind of different policies, like the traits or fragments we can have over there. Then we have CLI that works for both mule and non mule applications, where you can automate your process, maybe deploying it to Exchange, or even uh, you can publish your rule set using the CLI. OK, so that is for automation. So implementing modern architecture, we have Flex Gateway. Again, Flex Gateway is a ultra fast gateway for both mule and uh, non mule application, we can say, and mostly for non mule application, which can be found in your API manager. OK, then comes uh, gain constant, uh, consistency, security, and quality. So here comes your API governance, API manager. So governance is what we are going to look like, how it helps you to govern your uh, designs, your RAMLs, so you can have uh, applied all the best practices 
what you need. You can also have your custom rule set, like uh, if your organizer follow some particular rule set or standards, what they want to apply, they can use that as well. API manager to apply all your uh, policies or proxies. Okay, you can see over there like uh, how many failure uh, with respect to the policies or how many success, the error rate, you can see it over there. Then comes the create vibra uh, Create Vibrant API Ecosystem, which is API Exchange, Community Manager, and very recently we have Experience Hub. So Exchange is your one-stop uh, place where you can have everything, all your connectors defined, uh, specifications, APIs, everything is defined over there. Okay, if you want to have any dependencies or anything, you can see everything over there. Community Manager, that is for a developer portal where you can have a very a fascinating developer portal to show it to your client, Okay, uh, how how your uh, apps would look like. Then Experience Hub, that is something new, which is regarding the building an API portal. Okay, so that's what the Universal API Manager offers. Now, what are the current challenges and how API uh, governance help us? So, we know like teams work in silos, right? Different uh, teams are working, like different developers are working on different things, or maybe on same. API, they might be working. They work on silos and uh, they need to follow some standard. Okay, but sometimes it happens like uh, if there is no one to see that or check that, you miss some of the standard or you mess up with things what other has created. Okay, there you need to have a particular review cycle where again you need to engage someone to review the code what you have done, like the C4E team, what we have, the checklist, what we have. We need to have some dedicated person to go through that, uh, like what we have created is fine or not, okay? Uh, uh, is it going through the standard or not? And that is a little bit time consuming. And also you need to like wait for certain people if they are not available, you need to wait, right? Then there can be an issue of security and uh, vulnerability, okay? You cannot uh, like uh, manage all the security every time individually, correct? Uh, there can be like multiple environments people are working on and uh, things can mess up when uh, a, a particular standard or rule sets are not followed, correct? So these are some of the challenges what we are facing with respect to when it comes to a design or quality of the code. And we cannot, uh, we cannot compromise with the quality and security of the code, right? So there where API governance come into picture to benefit you with your design. So you can have a shared governor, uh, governance practice that is publish a governance rule set in any point exchange to share with other developers. So like you can have your own custom rule set and you can publish it to exchange and you that particular rule set can be used by all of your developer who is working on that particular project or organization. Then uh, apply consistent rule set at design time. So one thing we have, we have a API governance uh, part we have an api governance tab in our platform but again if you want to apply that at the time of design that is also possible and we'll see that uh, when we are uh, going to our demo part that enforce governance uh, within your devops organization so you can uh, apply uh, automatically apply standard to your api contact and define within your cicd pipelines then api quality will be improved definitely uh, development review cycle will be uh, minimized. Like you don't need to wait for some individual to have that checklist and review your code and approve that, whether that's meet the standard or not. Uh, top 10 open web application security projects, like uh, the security risk has been taken care of this uh, by this. Then consistent, uh, consistent API spec. So like if you have a particular rule set, so you are going to have a particular standard and it will be consistent for throughout the organization. So that's what benefit we have with API governance. So at present, we have uh, 11 governance rules provided by MuleSoft, okay, which you can see over the screen. So these are the 11 by default rule sets what uh, MuleSoft has provided, where we have got any point best practices. We have for best practices for async API. We have for data graph. Okay, we have for uh, uh, open web uh, application security pro protocol. We have uh, open APIs best practices. Likewise, we have 11 by default. And uh, as I mentioned it again, and I'm repeating, we can have our own custom rule set. And once we publish that, we can see that over here as well. Okay. So how, like, what are the steps uh, you should follow when you govern your API? So first you need to identify which API you want to govern. 
configure governance profile to identify which rule set you need to apply to that. Uh, you monitor your conformance status for that. Okay, then fix if there is any conformance issue. If any error comes with your conformance, you fix that. And uh, like uh, you can you can also see your conformance status from your API exchange, like whether it is valid uh, validated, not validated, or uh, it is uh, conformant or non-conformant. So coming to the conformance part, so we have, again, three different levels over there. One is profile. One is uh, governance across, uh, uh, conformance across governance profile and non-conformance by severity. Okay. So how it is divided is the profile sees you like whether your application is normal or at risk. So it is normal when your conformant is more than 70% for that API it will be at risk if it is less than 70%. Okay, then there are three different stages of conformant. One is conformant, non-conformant, and non-validated. Conformant means everything is good. You have passed the rule set. It's a green signal. Okay, no issues, no error with your uh, API design. Non-conformant means, okay, there are some issues, okay, uh, which is not allowing your application to move forward. And not validated means you have not created a governance profile for that. Then coming to the severity, like uh, if it is non-conformance, like how severe it is. So if it is within a bracket of 0 to 40% uh, of governance rule passed, then it is high severity. If 41 of to 80% is passed, then it is medium. And if 81 to 99% is passed, then it is low severity. Okay. So that's how the conformance uh, are measured. Now, uh, custom rule set, how you do that, like... Uh, to get an example, you can download an existing rule set. You can modify the YAML file the way you want to do it, publish it to Exchange, and then you can add that as a dependency, or you can use that in your uh, API governance profile. Okay, so the language it follows is AML, anything modeling language, and I will show all this when we will go to our demo. Now it is a demo part. Before going to demo, uh, anyone have any question? No questions, are we good? Hey Gaza, I see you. Hey Abhishek, very good morning. Good morning, and Gaza is the one who has taught me API governance, so thank you Gaza. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so are we good with this part? Should we go with the demo? Anyone, yes, no? Yes, yes, Abhishek, okay. yes, we can go ahead. Okay, so now let us go to our demo part. So this is our AnyPoint platform. In your AnyPoint platform, you can see there is a tab for API governance. Either you can see it over here or you can see it from this, okay? So how your uh, API governance profile looks, at present there is no profile. So it will be empty, but we are going to create a profile, okay? So just you need to do a new profile and you need to put the apps you want to do or you want to govern. Okay, so before that, let me take you to the design center and show like the API which I have created. I mean the RAML which I have created. So there are these two RAML which I have published to actually. This is a demo part which we'll see later on. But this is the one which we I have created and have published this to exchange. So once you go to exchange, you can see that. Okay, so if we go into employee, so you will see it is not validated. So we spoke about there are stages, right? Uh, there are stages uh, for our conformance, conformant, non-conformant, and non-validated. So this is the not validated part. That means we have not applied the rule on this. One more thing, there is a tag option over here. So it's a, it's a suggestion like uh, it's a good practice if you provide tags over here because this tags will be very much important when you uh, apply governance rule on your uh, RAML, okay? Similarly, student, okay, not validated. Again, we have a tag, which is governance. Fine, so we have our APIs on exchange, or we can say RAML on exchange. So we'll go to API governance and we'll try to create a rule set for this, a profile for this. Okay, I'm sorry.
okay so we'll click new profile so here when you start it asks you like which rule which rule set you want to apply so you can see the default rule set what we have okay so i have already created a custom rule set so you can see that is also automatically coming over here okay so i will apply any point best practices for our rama and in this you can see like what all apis are applicable for this so at present uh, there is an option for tag if you choose don't choose anything you can see all the applications over here but if you go and choose like i have only governance at present so if i choose this so it will show me both because both comes under the governance tag but if there are multiple tags and if you are choosing multiple okay then it works as a an and condition not as a or condition so if you choose governance and there is one more takes uh, say student and if you choose both governance and student so it will look for a application which has got both the tag tag governance and student it's not like either governance or student no it's a an and condition okay so once we do that we will go next okay so here uh, like uh, it's asking like uh, whether you want to send an email or not so if you want to send email to someone specific you can define their email address over here else by uh, it will go to the publisher like who is the publisher over here it will go to their email address okay then here you need to give a name for your profile so i can give like uh, look now meetup okay then next so it will ask you to review everything what you have done is correct or not and you can apply more than one rule set minimum one okay minimum one is required but you can have more than one as well okay now status active so it has created our profile over here so now you will see we have talked about the risk part okay we have talk about, talked about whether confirm and non confirm and the severity okay so it has applied our rule on both the applications which you can go and see so in this you will see there is the confirm is passed it is passed so there is no violation but in this we have a lot of violations so you can check what all violations we have over here okay you can go to your raml you can rectify that you can come back you can update it and then you can see whether you have any other uh, confirmant or not okay so this give you like there are two active api at present one is at risk okay one is confirmant one is not confirmant and the severity is high because mm, the pass percentage is only 0 to 40% for my second api okay that's why uh, it is uh, coming under non confirmant also if you go to your exchange okay and now if you see the tag has changed for this earlier it was not validated but now it is non confirmant because there are issues on this okay similarly for employee it is confirmant because we have applied the policy right any question till now anyone we good so abhi yeah. yeah. sir yeah with the help of tags uh, we are just grouping the apis so that multiple is we can apply yes the... yeah we can say like uh, if you want to apply uh, one single rule set for multiple and we want to we don't want to uh, create a different profiles for multiple api if we want to do it in a single one we can uh, tag them okay and we can use that tag if you don't use the tag option it will show you all the apis over there and that will be applicable for all the api but if you want to segregate it with certain rule sets like you have custom rule set and you want to apply on certain one then you can use the tags so okay so adding to abhishek's point uh, the re real practice is we have a different apis right uh, uh, experience api system api and the proc api so if you have a well standard you have uh, some sort of rules right you particularly uh, want to apply on the experience api so you can create your profile with respect to the experience api okay 
and the similar and the same tag you can uh, put it uh, into you know, your api the x uh, experience api or it will filter all the experience api and you can apply it okay so the tag will really help us when we apply uh, rules according to the profile that we have created okay so the best recommendation is we have to create a separate profiles okay as per our requirement mainly if you have those single profile it will uh, a bit tricky because uh, in particular file you have a lot of uh, rules right and if you want to apply it then uh, some of the apis you don't want it then it will be difficult for you to you know uh, categorize so it's best best practices as per the experience api or oh, sorry as per the api layers we have uh, just try to create a uh, for uh, one uh, profiles for experience one for the process one for system that will be easy for you guys to uh, use or uh, uh, you know uh, uh, this is what the recommendation i can uh, suggest because i see I, we are using a uh, uh, this this in a couple of uh, uh, or say like a long time we are using it and uh, i see that the recommendation will help okay and we can yeah. easily put our tags and when you filter it if you put experience and proc in system, all the, all the system layers will apply straight forward. I hope uh, I answer, answer your question, right? With respect to tags and profiles. Yeah, that was great, Raja. Thank you so much for adding that up. Uh, yeah, because more? you know, you know, yeah. right? Experience API, we have a different security mechanism. System, right. we have a very less policies or. Uh, you know standards and all so according to that we should uh, create the profiles right uh, Abhishek, yeah. Here. Yeah, so yeah. um this uh, rule set will be applied to only raml level or code level also we can apply uh, so this is a part of your design okay your api uh, design we can say so this applies on your raml okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, code uh, level. Actually, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please continue, brother. Yeah. So code level. So this governance rules is is mainly for a design level only. The Abhishek, you rightly said, yeah. because on the design level, we first we have to design our Ravel in a such a way, or uh, with respect to the practices that means of recommended, right? Code level, we have a different uh, uh, mechanism, or uh, the CI/CD pipelines. We can uh, in, enforce some. Uh, you know, sonar cubes and standards, yeah. right? So that is a different uh, development level. We have a different things, but for a design point of view, the, the MuleSoft give us a uh, governance uh, capability, API governance capability to uh, rectify all the rules. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Abhishek, I have yeah. one question. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have applied as a as we showed, we have applied the rules of two APIs. One is employee and student. So one is right. passed and second is not passed, right? Right. So why it no, I mean, can we see the rules why it is not passed? Yeah, we can see the rules. We'll we'll come to that. Okay. So now uh, coming to how we can see the rule set over here. So you can filter. Okay, provided by say MuleSoft. Okay, you can filter. So you can see all the rule sets over here. So like we have applied any point best practices, okay? So these are the rule sets what you have where these are the violations one and these are the warning, okay? So what, we, yeah. Yeah, at, yeah, so we can see the rules, but uh, as uh, the API is showing the failure reason, I mean, I saw the 16 errors. Right, right. So yeah. just show me why it is failing this. Yeah, I will show that, sure. First, first, let me uh, tell, uh, talk about this. Uh, then we'll yeah, we'll show you that. Yeah. yeah. So what we can do is, if we even if, if we want to see what is written inside this, or if you want to create our own rule sets, okay. So we can download this, okay. And this is how it will come over here. Unzip this, and you can see all the rule sets what we have. Okay, like the API must have title. So if you'll find it over here, you will get this. Okay, so this rule has been applied over here. Like we need to have a title over here. Okay, these are the uh, like uh, rules or uh, the commands what has been written over here, like what is needed. So if any of this condition doesn't match, then your uh, design is going to fail. 
uh, at the API governance profile. Okay, and these all are AML codes, like anything modeling language. Using that, this course has been written, this uh, script has been written, which is going to check all the validations, uh, what you have. Another, we have got warning where if you are not even meeting this, this will just give you a warning, but this is not going to fail your uh, profile. Okay, so see, uh, using this, you can have your own rule set. So that is something what I have created over here. Okay, I've created a rule set. Uh, I have just used uh, three uh, options over here, like must have title, uh, base URI and API version. So what I have written is my, the title of my API, uh, RAML should end up with either experience API, process API or system API, like the layer name should be there at the end. It should end up with that. That is one rule. Second rule is with the base URI, it should have HTTPS. Whenever we define it, it will not work with HTTP. And the third is for my version. The version should start with a V, either it can be V point, uh, V1 or V1.0 or uh, V1.0.1, but it should not be 1.0.0, like it should start with V. So this is what a custom rule set I have created. Now coming to your point, like you want to see a uh, white field. So we can go to our governance. Okay. So student should be lowercase. Response 201 must be uh, using a content header. Okay. There are two occurrence for that. Then parameter uh, path string must be defined. Again, should be lowercase for response. Uh, re uh, request and response, like uh, always include uh, example in request and response. So this all, you can see like white failed over here. Yeah, Abhishek, just uh, if you don't mind, can we yeah. see parallelly with the RAML? The rules yeah, the yeah, yeah. There, there also we can see it. I will take you to the RAML. So the, uh, this is one way how you apply your rule set and you create your profile. So this is after creating the RAML and applying it and you're getting the data, right? But now let me show you one more way where when you're designing the API, at the same time, you can apply the rule set and you can use that uh, to rectify all the uh, violations what you have done. Okay, so this is my API, what I have created. Okay, now in this, okay, I have already applied it. Let me remove it. Okay. So at present, I don't have any rule set over here. Okay, so I don't see any error, but you can apply a rule set when you're designing. Okay, add rule set from here. You can choose like if you want to use your custom rule set or anything which we also provide. So we are going to apply the best practices from any point uh, what we got. So now you see we have a rule set over here. And now you can see all the errors what we're getting in the profile. You can get it over here. Now I just want to see the error. So these are the errors and you it will it will show you over here, like what is not matching. So the student, it should be a small s, not a capital S. So once you rectify that, that error has gone. So earlier it was 39, now it is 38, okay? So likewise, we can see all the violations what we have at the time of design itself. And then once everything is done, if you want to create a profile for your, uh, RAML in API governance, you can do that. Okay, yeah. fine, fine, thank you. Yeah, right. So now this was about uh, the governance rule what MuleSoft provide. Now what if I want to apply my own governance rule set what I've created, okay? So what I will do is I, uh, after creating the rule set, I need to get it in exchange, okay? So there are multi -way of, multiple way of doing that, but the easiest way is like, uh, in the exchange using the publish new asset option. Then from here, you choose the rule set, give the name to your rule set. 
and choose the file you want to upload okay once you do that you will get the rule set what you have created okay now once the rule set has been published you can go to your design center so likewise how i've so, uh, shown we can add a dependency as a rule set for our api similarly we will use our custom rule set so this is a demo application which i have created okay so in this let's say i will remove this for now okay so at present i don't have applied any rule set for this okay so i have no error but now we can apply our custom rule set and now i can see there are three errors first it should start with https second says provide the title for the api ending with the layer description okay say system api so the way i have written is like it should end up with a layer name so once i did that it is gone and the version should be either v1 or v1.0 yeah yeah avichek hmm. can you just open your custom rules yeah sure i will do that okay so once you do that all your confirmations are meant okay there is no error and now they it goes upon with your standard like whatever rule sets you have written okay so if you want to create a profile you can go to api manager and you can create a profile for this okay but uh, the standard what you want is already met just to have a record just to see uh, just to say like whether it is confirmant or not or to have a tag uh, in your exchange for confirmant you can create a profile and you can use that okay now coming to the rule set what i have created okay so this is a rule set which i have created where i have mentioned like there should be a violation error when this particular uh, operations are not met and this are a aml condition uh, aml language okay which comes from this okay so there you can see a lot of a lot of uh, content we have okay what all we need to apply so one we have used is the web app api okay this is the one rule set we have used over here so if you'll see yep class this is the class we have used okay which uh, contains the uh, we can say the keywords uh, to define internally okay the uh, regarding the rule sets we want to apply okay then like for server we have so this all comes from your uh, aml script and someone was asking like to see the code so this is how it uh, the rule set look like are you clear yeah vishik thank you yeah. and just to have a like uh, if you want to have a reference you can download what is already built from yourself and you can take that as a reference like how it is created okay so that will be a best example for you to see and create your own rule sets if you want so i i even i have done that like i have used this as a uh, for a practice and using that i understood like what need to be done and i have created this and abhishek uh, one more yeah. point is uh, we have uh, apart from the violence we have uh, violations uh, and uh, then we have a warning right so yeah. the difference between uh, violations and the you know the warning warning is just uh, it will not fail your api to publish but it will give the warnings right um, it's it's just kind of alert you are missing something but it will not going to impact so we can put uh, these uh, warnings as well if you really want it uh, or straight forward you can uh, uh, put some constraint so basically a violation is constraint without approving or uh, having that uh, you will not able to publish your api you will get the alert immediately on the design center but warning you are um, uh, go to publish but it will show that uh, you uh, you are missing something but it will not gonna impact uh, your design and all right so with respect to description you see that right the header must have a description and all 
your your functionality will not go on a break but this is more over the content how we gonna represent the content or description or all about so if you want to put this as in constraint you will very well go ahead and add as a uh, violation okay yep so, yeah. thank you gaza so that's what difference between violation and warning so if you want you can put the warning tag for in the validation uh, violation as well so if if that doesn't match your ramal will fail for validation so any other question we have for this i know it was a little quick but yeah this is all about api governance and how you create how you apply your rule sets or how you can create your own custom rule sets all this just adding a few points abhishek uh, uh and for the folks that joined the meeting right uh, there are two ways uh, for this rule set one is uh, you want to strict your design at the design level then you have to add your rule set uh, in the design center itself let's say we have already uh, api is built right and we want to run uh, you know or like uh, is there any violations or not then you can create a different profiles and then you applied it that will be a lengthy process because uh, we are not sure whether the old rammels we are uh, having the proper standard and all but if you really uh want to see is there any violations or the warnings you have you can very well go and add that um, rule set but it will not restrict you uh, to you know a deployment or something because you already publish it okay so it will not break your functionality you already have a uh, created a, uh, auto discovery and you already publish it so it will not gonna impact but it will give you the overall view these are the violations and warnings still you have in the old apis and you can uh, inform your developers to uh, you know um uh, to update it and correct it but it will not break your functionality okay but when when you uh, uh, change it and uh, try to uh, publish it again then it will uh, you know hold you back okay so there are two ways the main uh, recommendation is always try uh, try to apply rule set at the design level when you try to design a api okay um, but the second approach is for the governance team who is taking care of whether the developers or the across the teams are uh, uh, using the standards or not they will get the complete uh, picture and then send the emails to the respective team the developers to correct it okay but as a, pro, a developer point of view always follow the first approach uh, apply the rule set at the design center level 